Hey guys, it's your girl Mama V here. I am here to do a small little rant about some international traveling that I did um, a, just about a week ago. And so my older sister, my brother, and I decided to go to um, Tonga, where our parents are from, where um, we're first generation, we're first generation Tongan American, and this was our first time going there. Me and my sisters traveled internationally before, not necessarily together, um, but this was my brother's first trip international. So we were very stressed out because we didn't know how it was going to be. Um, not a lot of places nor countries can be accommodating at all times uh, for those who need uh, physical assistance. So we book our trip and on the tickets we made sure to indicate that my brother needed some wheelchair assistance and that my sister was to be his aide. He does need an aide. And so we were good. Right when we booked our tickets, I think it was about two weeks before our actual trip, my sister had called um, Fiji Airways, which is the airline we're traveling round trip with and let them know just want to make sure it's marked in the system they say yeah you're good to go we called um san francisco airport and let them know that we'll need wheelchair assistance um, when we go and when we come back a couple of days do the same thing make sure everything's golden call people again we thought we were prepared but i guess we weren't that prepared and so the day of the trip comes we go to San Francisco airport, we check in, and surprisingly enough, some airlines or airports charge extra for wheelchairs because I guess they considered those carry-ons. And of course, they're bigger and heavier than the normal carry-ons. But luckily, this lady was nice enough. She was like, don't worry about it, just check it in. We'll have someone um, come with the wheelchairs that belongs to the airport to get you guys to your gate. Perfect, good to go. So the lady comes, walks us to our terminal. We say bye to you know our family, and she lets us know once we get to the terminal, this is my the end of my assignment. Your brother has to get seated in one of the waiting chairs, and then someone else will come with the owl chair. And the owl chair is thin enough to get through the um, aisles on the airplane. So we're like, great. All right, that's fine. And so we're about two hours before our flight. My sister was busy trying to meet a work deadline. Um, so, you know, me and my brother just hanging out. And then I notice, you know, closer to boarding, no one's coming yet. And they're like, oh, we're gonna delay boarding for like another 30 minutes. So I, you know, I started to chill out a little bit more. And then, um, they're like, okay, we're gonna start boarding. And I noticed there is um, a line of like three or four wheelchair uh, passengers. And I'm like, what happened to ours? So I go up to the front desk. I'm sure you guys are all familiar if you travel this, you know, right in front of your gate, they have people at the front desk, you know, telling people how to line up, who they're going to board first. Um, and they always board those who have disabilities family um, with children first so I tell her like hey I see you guys are about to board no one has helped my brother she's like oh they're on their way don't worry we didn't forget so I'm like okay cool this was the same lady that um didn't charge us for the wheelchair when we first got our boarding passes and checked in our um you know actual check-in luggage and then um so I'm like, okay, cool. So I go back to my seat and then I notice they already started boarding the wheelchair people. And so I'm like, okay, this, I don't think, I don't think no one's coming. And so I tell her again, like, hey, like we need help. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, someone's coming. They're going to help the other people on first. And I can tell that she, I mean, she didn't call anyone on the phone. She didn't call anybody on the radio. And so I took matters into my own hands and I waited right outside the gate. So right before you give them your passport and the boarding pass, I waited right there. And I waited for someone who was coming out with a wheelchair. So this older guy comes out with the wheelchair and I like flag him down. And I'm like, hey, I, I need somebody with a wheelchair um, on the other side because um, there was a big crowd and we were on the 
across the other way from the big crowd where my brother is sitting. He looks a little bit agitated and he's like, oh, you guys didn't have anybody? I'm like, no, they told me to come wait for somebody and I see you have a wheelchair. And so he doesn't look like he wants to go across the big crowd. He's like, oh, well, um, can your brother walk here? And I'm like, in my head, I was like, bruh, for real? Like, common sense, no. But anyway, so I was like, don't wanna cause a fuss. So I said, no, that's why we need the wheelchair. My brother cannot walk. Very calmly, like not trying to do any attitude. I've seen those videos where they start like escorting people, arresting people off planes and the money we spend and the time and preparation. Um, I did not want that to happen. I was like, let's just make it to the other country. And so he doesn't say anything. He starts getting, you can tell he's irritated and he starts pushing through the crowd with the wheelchair. Um, gets my brother on the wheelchair and we start pushing um, back through and they let us through. At this point, halfway, the regular patch surgeries are already boarding, so it's pretty crowded. And people are trying to bypass us and get in front of the wheelchair so they don't have to wait. Like, I get it. People are worried. They just want to get settled in. It's an international trip for everyone. But sometimes I wonder how people were raised in terms of courtesy. Anyways. That's another video in the making. So we get to the entrance of the plane. So you know, the portable gates at the airport house helps bridge the gap to actually load onto the plane. So I'm like, okay, cool, we're here. And so the guy who's pushing my brother, the agitated one who asked me not the greatest question if my brother could walk to him and he goes, okay, well, go ahead and put down your stuff and um, have your brother walk to his seat. I kid you not. He literally asked me that. And I'm sitting there like, this is, this, is, this is the same guy I said to maybe no more than five minutes ago that my brother could not walk. So what made him think in five minutes he was going to miraculously walk all of a sudden? So I'm like, um, my brother cannot walk, as I told you before. And he starts getting agitated, and he's like, well, you guys should have told us. Why didn't you tell anybody he needs an aisle seat? This is not an aisle wheelchair. And I'm like, I did tell the people in the front, and they did not have anybody help us. I told you my brother couldn't walk. Um, so I don't understand where the misunderstanding's going on. And the actual flight attendants that belong to Fiji Airline, of course, they're all standing near the entrance so they see this exchange happening back and forth. My sister's also getting a little irritated and she's like, look, I prepared this two weeks ahead of time, called you guys a couple of days before, and it's your job to know that. It's your problem, go fix it. So he goes back and, you know, he's still exchanging in an argument. I'm like, what are we supposed to do? He literally cannot walk. There's nothing we can do about this situation. And so we're trying to keep our cool, but luckily the Fiji airline people, it's flight attendants, it was a, a nice woman and a nice man. They're like, don't worry about it. We'll call to get you guys an aisle seat. So she goes on her little walkie talkie and she's like, go ahead and set yourself stuff down. I'll stay here with your brother make sure he's okay. You guys can come back. So I'm like, awesome. Someone who's helpful. How hard is it? So we get my brother into the aisle seat. We get him into his airplane chair. And I'm like, I'm a little bit irritated before the plane takes off. And I'm like, you know, I'm really thankful the flight attendants that we have to deal with for the next 11 hours were the ones who actually helped us. And they were super helpful. The guy, um, he was like a tall, stronger built guy. He was like, do you guys need help carrying your brother into the seat? And we're like, no, we got it. You know, our brother's more comfortable with us handling him. Everybody around us saw kind of like the commotion that was happening and I don't know if they were just genuinely nice or they felt bad about what happened, but they were super nice to my brother throughout the flight. Like whenever we had to use the restroom, they would, you know, clear out the aisle ways without even us even asking. Um, they would, you know, make small conversation with him on the flight, ask us, you know, a couple of questions. The flight attendants were super nice. Like Fiji Airlines got an unlock on how to accommodate for children, women with diff um, children and women and families and people with different abilities. Like it was awesome. 
And then when we get to Fiji, there was no issues. They didn't forget about us, like SFO workers. They let us know, like, hey, we're gonna get let everybody off the plane first, and then um, let you and your brother and your sister get off the plane. They brought the wheelchair to us. We didn't have to look for them. Awesome, like that was such a relief to know that we didn't always have to argue or we didn't always have to worry about being forgotten and you know trying not to be an inconvenience to other people and then so when we get to fiji you know they have a guy there um pushing the wheelchair and he's like you know i have to still stay with you guys to get you guys through security um so people know that you're in like the priority line I think it's each airline, or at least I saw on Fiji, they had a line for those um, who are first class and disabled. So that way it's a little bit shorter waiting time. And so I thought that he was gonna have to take the wheelchair and I'm like, we have an eight hour layover, that sucks. Like wherever we're seated, we're gonna have to just bring my brother like the food or like, you know, um, try to carry him to the bathroom. But he was nice enough. He's like, just keep the wheelchair. Don't worry about it. I will collect it after. And I was like, awesome, Fiji, great. You guys have been giving me a great experience other like the country that I'm actually from. Um, and this is in no way to like bash, but really inform people of how stressful it is to travel with those who need physical assistance. And I don't think you really, re someone really realizes that until you have like an elderly person that you had to help through crowds or travel or you have a family member with a disability and you always have to um you know combat other people for not being considerate especially since we prepared so eight hours pass by we're getting ready to play um board our last plane and my sister's like oh let's take our brother to the bathroom and she was like oh you know i went into the bathroom and i didn't see those big stalls like they have an SF and I was like, she's like, how are we gonna get him to the bathroom with this wheelchair? I'm like, sis, don't worry girl. They have a whole nother bathroom like with a closable door. You know those um, bathrooms that allow men and women and children and it's a big bathroom, you can close the door. I was like, they have that for those with disabilities. I mean, cause it, it makes more sense. Even though those big bathroom stalls may seem big to a singular person, if you have like my brother and his wheelchair and my sister in the bathroom trying to help him and if even if she needs my help that's like almost four extra bodies in there i went like this four extra bodies in there so that space can get really small so i re really do appreciate airports who do that um sfo did have it too uh from what i remember and so we get him settled in after the bathroom and we're just waiting. And so we're like, hopefully it's not like another, you know, scene like before where we had to seek help. Nope, not at all. Like maybe 15, 20 minutes before they even announced that they were boarding people, um, a lady came over um, and she was a Fiji Airlines employee and she was like, oh, I'll take your brother from here. One of you guys can come and accompany him. I'm like, wow. <laughs> this is awesome we did not have to seek them out and they just made sure he was taken care of they're like we got it let's get him in and so that was really delightful i mean it was awesome so the rest of the trip not such a you know exciting ex um story about you know wheelchair everything else went pretty smooth and um, when we came back to sfo it was pretty smooth but it was just that hiccup in the first part of the trip that I wish went a little bit easier. I honestly expected it to um, go a little bit easier because we made so many preparations, but that's not the case. So shout out to you all who are conscious and aware of the difficulties for those who need assistance in traveling or you know even just going to a store and going to the grocery store shopping it can really be a difficult task so all in all just be aware be courteous move out the way if you see those who can't walk too long or those with wheelchairs i mean you can get to your seat way more faster and easier than they can so just be mindful just 
it doesn't hurt to wait like an extra one or two minutes. The plane is literally not going to leave you right when you're about to enter the gate. We all know that. And shout out to Fiji Airlines for making it a great experience. I honestly would fly through them again. Um, usually family flies through New Zealand Airlines. So this is our first time flying through Fiji Airlines. And you know, you read reviews and we're a little scared, but you guys are awesome. And um, we'll definitely be flying through you guys again. So that's the end of my 15 minute rant. Thank you guys for watching my video. This is Mama V. I'm signing out for the night. As you can see here, it is dark. Only time when the kids are up and I can actually vlog. <laughs> Have a good night, guys.